right. Should be live. Okay. Good to see everybody again. <clears throat> um, back here again for another part of the off grid seminar. And um, we'll just go ahead and get started here. And just like I said, I give it a, a minute or so just to make sure that people have time to get here and start watching. Trust everybody's doing good. So I'm going to talk today about people who should not move off grid. Not a real in-depth one, but there are some people that really shouldn't try to be off grid. And I will explain why. Um, again, um, you know, my experience over the years of people that tried to move off grid and it didn't work. So something to think about here. Okay, so we will get started. People who should not move off grid. Number one, uh, uh, not in any list of importance or more so or whatever. <laughs> um, people that have health problems which would, which would require a nearby hospital. Um, and I say that just as general advice for somebody out there that says, well, I have these issues and I need to go to the doctor a lot in the hospital. Um, I am a natural health uh, practitioner. I've been practicing it on myself and on my family <laughs> and giving out the advice for other people. Um, a lot of experience in natural health and, and healing and things. Um, the best thing to do is get your nutrition figured out, get in good shape and whatever else you won't need the hospital or the doctor. I haven't been to a doctor or any kind of medical personality and probably I don't even know. 15 years, maybe, something like that. Um, my son was born at home. I delivered him. Um, so, you know, people can say, oh, you know, just wait, wait till you get a child or something like that, then you'll need the hospital. No, I won't. Um, and we're careful, you know, you, again, oh, it's just living dangerously. Well, life is dangerous, but I find people that, that have all the health insurance and all the medical stuff around, a lot of times they can be a little bit more stupid with the way that they live. Um, because, hey, it's all covered. I have to go to the hospital, no big deal. Um, us, we're careful. You know, we think before we do certain things. Hey, don't do that, son. Don't climb up on that. You could, you know, get hurt there and can't go to the hospital or anything here. Please be careful. Okay? It makes you think before you do things. If I go out, I'm going to be, you know, cutting timber or whatever, doing firewood. I think first and I say, you know what? Uh, I don't really like the way these trees are above me here. I should probably do this or that. I don't want to end up, you know, hurt really bad. And there's really no hospital real close to us here. There's a medical um, thing, health center thing down the road from us here in Patton a ways. Um, but I don't really intend to ever go to a place like that. So, but if you get somebody that's, that's sickly, that requires a lot of medical attention, Going off grid in the middle of nowhere might not be a good idea. Now, if you could go off grid in terms of in a small town or something, and you just say, not really living with electricity, um, I'm cutting out a lot of the modern conveniences. Well, sure, absolutely. Um, again, define off grid. Well, you have to be at least three hours away from anybody else and be dropped in by helicopter or something or bush plane or something and have no anything. No, you can be you know, not dependent on electricity, even if you're in a town, you know, so, but I'm saying mostly for the people that would move way out into the middle of nowhere, if you have health issues, get those fixed up first, okay, another one, and I have heard this, again, I'm not trying to be insulting here, or just a jerk, I have heard this, okay, those concerned with theater, opera, or status, you know, I've heard, you know, men in that, that talk about their wife says, yeah, I like to go to the opera once in a while and whatever. You know, I, I'm concerned about, you know, my social club and whatever. Don't go off grid. Okay. Get a nice place in town or whatever else. Please don't move out into the country and have to do your little trips back to, you know, to check with your society friends and whatever else. You know, it's not only is it not the right thing to do, but it's not the right mindset to be in an off grid situation. Um, it just simply isn't, uh, again, you get out. I remember uh, watching a, a woman that was actually in the Allagash wilderness, uh, 
area, one of the camps over there. And she said she was, you know, the wife of the guy that was running the camp. And she said one of the most amazing things was she was out uh, canoeing the lake the one night and she came around this corner and there was a tree uh, that had lightning bugs in it and they were all lit at the same time. And she said it was the most beautiful, amazing thing she's ever seen. And if you've ever been out on a lake in a northern environment, you can hear the the sound of the, um, oh man, I'm forgetting. I don't have it in my notes right now. The, I can't think of the name of the bird. The Oh man, I'll think of it in a minute. I'm sorry, my brain just, ugh. but uh, you can hear the sound of, you know, the, can't think of it, but you can, you know, the sounds of, of being out on the water at night, looking up at the uh, loon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. That's, that's it. Yeah. The loon. Thank you. There's nothing like the sound of a loon at night out on a lake, looking up at all the stars and everything else. It's theater. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, there's nothing that can compare. Um, and if that sounds interesting to you and intriguing and, and um, the sounds of nature and whatever else, well, then you'll probably make it off grid. Well, I couldn't think of the name Loon, but um, the, next, the next one here, those who want to start out off grid and then eventually connect to the grid. Um, and again, I don't care. People can be on the grid. That's fine. I'm not, you know, I don't go around and yell at people because they have electric coming to their house or something. I don't care what people do with their time, but I've seen people and they will go and they will buy cheap land that's off grid and then they try to bring the power to it. Um, it's not right. You shouldn't do that because what you're doing is you're going to increase the property taxes in the area and, and everything else, which is another one of my points coming up here. So, you know, if you're going to make up your mind, I want to be off grid, then stick with it. And you know, grow along with your experiences. Um, I actually heard some guy the one time say that it takes about nine years to get to know a property. And at the time I thought, can't take that long. Yeah, it does. To go through the different seasons and all oh, this year was really dry and we didn't get, these berries didn't grow right or the apples didn't grow or, huh, you know, and you learn a lot of different things. Um, it takes years to get to know a property. So if you're moving and saying, well, um, I'll do the off-grid thing for a little bit, then I'm just going to get power to the property and things. Just buy a property that already has power. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. People that are addicted to TV would be another group. Um, you know, running some huge, big 60-inch TV or something off-grid, not really practical. Um, <clears throat> again, you know, if why are you going to go off-grid if you have to watch television and What's the latest of everything and whatever. I remember um, in the Dick Prennicky book that I talked about One Man's Wilderness, he talked about how that he doesn't even read a newspaper. And he said, my life is my newspaper. You know, I get up and, you know, Dick Prennicky goes down to the water to get a fish, a grayling or something like that. You know, it's, that's today's top headlines. <laughs> and there's a lot of good thought to that. Again, if you have to be entertained and, and things, what are you doing going off grid? What are you doing out there? Um, if you want to be that kind of life and get a place in town and then have your off-grid cabin or something like that, or, you know, I mean, and that's another thing that you can do too, by the way, um, the thing of being off-grid, it doesn't have to be full-time, you know, but keep the two separated, right? For people out there, it might be looking into that as an idea. Get a cabin someplace, like an old hunting cabin or something that there's no electricity. And then you can go out there and you can spend more time out there and, and try out new things and whatever else. Spend more and more time at your off-grid cabin. Another thing that you can do. Um, <clears throat> another one that irritates me. Uh, mansion builders who want to move city conveniences to off-grid properties. Um, I remember there was actually a guy. Uh, oh, man. I can't think of what the guy's name. Buckskin Bill or something like that. Um, there was actually a, vi a video about that guy. Let me see if I can find it here quick. Um, oops. 
and this guy said he made this really phenomenal um yeah he made this really phenomenal statement about how that people they they leave you know they leave the city and then they bring the city with them you know and they they try to make it all work out there in the in the country i'll i'll show this video here in a little bit um but uh there's a lot of truth to that um so you know if you're going to come out into the country and you want to build some you know gigantic huge big mansion out there what you're going to be doing is you're going to be driving property tax up it's not really going to work efficiently off grid um again you're just going to end up making yourself miserable you know there's a channel on youtube that i saw a few of their videos and they built some you know gigantic big place and they're running a dishwasher and everything else off of solar and constantly complaining about this problem and that problem and yeah you know it's not really a smart thing to go off grid and build some gigantic thing and like i said it's it's going to increase property tax um which increases the property tax and it pushes out the local people too by the way i'll say that that's another thing that's irritating because then they start to raise other you know property taxes in the area i knew a place actually in pennsylvania where it was a country area and these people from the city of Reading were coming out there and buying up all the properties and building these gigantic mansions. And it basically bankrupted, you know, I shouldn't say bankrupted, but it actually pushed out the local people then because nobody could afford the property tax. And that was the whole point of it. You know, so all the rich people came out, took over the whole road and pushed out all the poor people. It's not the right thing to do. Another one, um, people who hate isolation. Okay. Again, depending on where you go, but I'm saying this point is for those who want to move out to a, a very remote area and you're out there by yourself, and you're miles away from whatever else. You have to love isolation. You have to love to be able to be by yourself and say, you know, I just want to be able to be left alone and, and uh, you know, raise my animals and my you know, garden and whatever else. You have to like isolation. And again, people that like isolation, it's not that they, you know, there might be some that don't want to be around people, but a lot of people that like isolation, it's just more of a, I want to be able to get up and plan my day myself and not have somebody else plan it for me and tell me what to do. Um, <clears throat> uh, another one that really has irritated me over the years, and that's people who want to change the area and not preserve it. Um, if you go to a country remote area, don't go in there with the with the intent of changing everything and we have to bring this service in and that thing in whatever you're coming in as an outsider especially if you're from the city and you want to move out to the country you have to understand there's people out there are going to be friendly but standoffish at first because we don't want our area changed all right so you come out you have to think about that you can't just come out and say um, you know, well, I'm just going to bring all of all this new stuff and people just have to get used to it. That's not going to work. You're not going to make many friends doing that. Um, you should have an appreciation for history. You should be able to come to an area and say, you know what? Um, I'd like to learn about this area. So I'll be talking a little bit more about here in another point, but that's an important thing. Another one would, that people that should not move off grid would be anti-gunners, people that are against guns and firearms and whatever else. Again, I knew of a couple that had moved and she was kind of a, you know, modern feministic, you know, career minded woman or whatever. And Oh, I'll, I'll have no guns in our home. And she changed her mind very quickly when there was a bear outside, you know, and trying to get into their yurt, you know. Um, you don't have to be having a gun does not mean that you're some kind of a I want to kill everybody in the world or something. no there's practical applications for guns right and you have to be willing to there might be a bad animal or something that's um, you know wounded or something or that's sick or something's wrong up in the head there or whatever else or they just will not go away and you have to say okay you're you know chewing on the wires of my vehicle or Whatever else, if I mean, if you're some kind of an animal rights, don't kill animals type of a person, don't move off grid. Okay. Um, another piece of advice there. 
another one, um, which I think should be a, a real standard, and that is people who want others to raise their children. Um, public schooling here in this area is 60% of our tax bill. Now, I am not again, I, I'm not for that. Okay. I'm not at all for that. I don't think there should be public schools. Public schools are, are an experiment that's not even 100 years old in terms of the modern way of doing things of the big buses going out and getting kids and everything else, taking them to a school. And especially now with all the junk that they're teaching these children in school, it's terrible. They should be abolished, quite frankly. And if you're going to move to an off-grid situation, I think, and you have children, you should be homeschooling them. Um, they'll learn a lot more um, from being with their parents. That's something that you should consider. Again, you know, and it's my my personal opinion. Somebody wants to disagree with that, go move off grid and send your children to school and whatever. Well, do whatever you want. But I'm just saying, from what I've seen, people that you know want to go and do the whole, well, usually doesn't work out very well. Um, another one, people who want others to do their work. I've seen that. I have personal experience with that, where people that move to a country area and, oh, hey, you know, oh, yeah, firewood over there. Hey, could you sell me some of your firewood? No. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm stuck. Could you come over and help me out over here? And could you? Can you? No, you figure that out yourself. I mean, I'm not saying I don't help people, but I'm just saying, you know, you're out here. You have to earn your stripes kind of a thing. You know, don't go out and, and just be constantly calling people and, oh, you know, hey, stop your life and come over in here and, and get me unstuck because I'm stuck or something. It's, it's not a good way to, you know, show that you can take it out there. Um, another thing that I've seen. Um, another one, people that shouldn't move off grid. Outsiders who are too proud to listen to local advice. The old saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, you know. Um, that's another thing that's very important. Don't go out and start pushing people around. Um, if you're an outsider, you know, then go and learn from them. Um, I'm not, I was not born and raised in Maine. And uh, my favorite people to talk to are Mainers, people that were born and raised here. And I've learned a lot, um, you know, just even how to pronounce, you know, things the right way. I was pronouncing things pretty foolishly when I first came to Maine, but just, you know, hey, how did, what's this about? What's that about? You know, talking to an older man the one time, born and raised in uh, Aristic County, and he said, you know, I mean, this guy was just a walking textbook, um, and, you know, we had a great conversation. We were there for a couple hours talking to the guy, and I learned so much in that time. It was, oh, we just had a great time, and um, it was a real honor to meet the guy, and so, you know, um, again, if you get somebody that's coming into an area and they're pushing the locals around and kind of, you know, treating them like they're their peasants or something, it's not going to go well. And you're not going to get the, um, the people will be friendly at first, but then it'll start to go the opposite direction. So I'll give you some advice on that. Another one, the final one that I've written here would be married couples that are not in agreement. Um, I saw there's some ridiculous reality TV show that all these reality TV shows, just a bunch of drama creation and, um, I clicked on a video the other day and this thing comes up. I don't even know what it's called. Something about off grid, something or other. And there's this guy and he's got this city girl and he's going to take her off grid and all the drama of it all. And she's shocked by his toilets being in one place. I'm just thinking just stupid, you know? Good old Hollywood. They try to take anything that's that's pure and wholesome and twist it and make it messed up. But yeah. But um, if you're not in agreement um, as a married couple, again, you're going to go out there and it's it's not going to go well. And typically, it's the wife that does not like the off grid uh, situation. There are some examples that I've actually known of where it's actually the man that didn't like the off grid thing. But that's usually in the minority. Usually it's the wife that it just is not into the thing of being off grid. Um, but if you have a, a wife that says, hey, I really like the idea of being out in nature and, and she's kind of a little bit 
reclusive, doesn't like to be around huge groups of people, well, then it can work out very well. Um, and of course, you know, attitudes will be changing uh, with some of the stuff that could be happening in this country before very long. Um, it'll feel a lot more comfortable to be out in nature than it will be to be in the cities with, you know, things melting down with the economy and whatever else. So, um, so that's what I have for my list. Um, you know, I'm probably offending people, but I just, I've seen it and I'm just saying, you know, if you're into that type of a thing, well, you know, into some of the stuff here and whatever else, well, it's probably not going to go very well for you if you try to go off grid. So let me um, share my screen here quick. Okay, right here you can see this. This is the video, the last mountain man, Idaho, Salmon Rivers, Buckskin Bill. Quite a character. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen that video yet, they, they actually go out. Um, he died in 1980. Um, but uh, you go out, or the, the, this, these people, they basically make you know, like a little film crew, and they go out there and they interview this guy. And he lives out there in the middle of nowhere. And um, so... Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a neat video if you haven't seen that. He's the guy that says about, you know, they, they leave, you know, Los Angeles and they take Los Angeles with them or something to that effect. So I thought that was pretty funny, but, um, so any questions? Um, what do, what do you mean by, uh, barbarian born again, barbarian? Well, barbarian is the Bible word for a northern European um, so that's what I'm I'm a, a barbarian ancestry I'm going to be bringing out some stuff here and uh, some upcoming videos about some of that but um, I was in contact with my older sister and she's been on ancestry.com for a while and going back over our ancestry and um, she's documented 14 generations back uh, to Germany and Switzerland so um, all the people out there that think I'm a Jew or whatever else, or, you know, I, you look Jewish, you act Jewish, whatever. Well, I'm not. And, you know, she did a DNA test and the whole deal and everything else. And there's not one drop of Jewish blood in my family. Um, don't hate the Jews or anything, but I'm saying, you know, so uh, I'm a barbarian, according to the Bible. Uh, and that's what a lot of people think of me because of the way we live. So which is fine. Um, my biggest issue is government and all their red tape. In terms of going off-grid, well, watch my one on the off-grid legal issues. That covers a lot of that. Okay, question. What if you have a wife that is hesitant to go in going off the grid? Well, you have to be in in um, good agreement on that because if it if it isn't, it's not going to work. Um, take her camping, uh, take her out in places, maybe rent a cabin someplace or whatever else, and just show her the benefits of being out there and picking wild edibles and and whatever else. So um, there's a lot to that, but it's just a matter of you know ease her into it, explain to her why it would be a good idea. Question. Sorry I missed yesterday. North Americans should be careful when moving to the tropics because of flesh-eating bacteria. It happened to someone many years ago. Um, yeah, there's some weird stuff down in, in tropical areas. Yeah. Question. What about cleanliness? Work with a guy who thinks he must, must shower every single day. Strange. Yeah, you can actually dry your skin out doing that. Um, you can lead to a lot of different uh, chafing and whatever issues if you're just, you know, taking showers all the time. But I covered that in one of the other live streams, the thing about hygiene. So.
question, do you still offer Bible study groups or no? I'm not sure what you mean in, in terms of in person. I'm not sure if you mean in person or not. Um, question definitely off topic, but with the news breaking with Russia, what do you make of it from a scriptural viewpoint? I guess how does possible homeland invasion affect off-grid living as well? That's actually a good question. That's actually one that I would you know, like to cover here. I don't think that there's any invasion right now in Russia. I think it's a another Gulf of Tonkin or it's a staged event. They're trying to get war with Russia, which I think would be a really stupid idea. If you haven't seen the video where they have the Chinese re military recruitment video, the Russian military recruitment video, and then the, the cartoon army one with the girl that had two moms or whatever else, just insane. Um, our modern military is, is a joke. Uh, I knew the one um, guy went into the army and um, and he said that they were, they stopped doing the, the uh, jumping jacks, you know, they go like this because too many people were hurting their, their uh, shoulders. <laughs> yeah, we're going to fight Russia. Uh, yeah. Um, but as, in terms of an invasion, uh, yeah, again, that might be a time when a lot of people right now, it's just oh, this kooky off grid stuff. I don't know if I want that. So the country starts falling apart, stuff hits the fan, the whole deal. I think you're going to be happy to be off grid. I mean, all the Black Lives Matter riots and everything else and the cities being burned down and everything, you know, and we're out at our property and things. We're just walking around, you know, and, I'm, and I said to my wife the one time, I said, you know, there's people right now that are fearing for their lives and they're out there fighting and all this other horrible stuff. And we're just. Oh, look, there's a pretty bird. <laughs> yeah. So what might seem weird to a lot of people right now, it might make sense in the future. And having an off-grid place is going to seem like a really good idea. And if armies do come, they're going to be sticking mainly to the highways and to populated areas and whatever else. They're pro pretty much just going to leave people alone out in the country. There'd be no point in hunting down every single person. To just cut off electric, cut off supplies, whatever. <laughs> And uh, if that time comes and you're off grid, you're going to be very thankful for it. Be worth more than all the money in the world, which can disappear pretty quickly. Question, how can a man find female companionship uh, living off grid? Well, um, maybe go to like a fishing and hunting, you know, shows or um, gun shops or whatever else, you know, things that might have off your uh, women that, that would be there and they're interested in that and whatever. And if, you know, as, as a saved Christian, you can pray about it and say, Lord, please send someone to me. I mean, I met my wife. She was ex-military, but she didn't know a thing about off-grid living. And um, she, you know, uh, got into the whole thing very quickly. And uh, it was actually her that pushed me to go off-grid, by the way. Um, I should say that too. Um, we were still, we had our place at Bridgewater and I was saying, you know, I, I want to get the cabin built first. I want to get this thing set up and that thing set up before we move in. And she said, we just need to go. Let's just move. You know, it doesn't matter. We don't have everything perfect right now, but I'm, I'm willing to, to rough it. I, I just can't stand living in town. Uh, she's never liked living in town. I didn't either, but you know, I was trying to get everything set up just perfectly for my wife and my son. And, and she just said, Let's just move. Let's go right now. So I thank the Lord for my wife. Um, I want to point out that Costa Rica is it it is it like South America for far different. Guyana does not get earthquakes and tornadoes, etc. We live on a big rock as the parable of the rock. Yeah, South America, you know, there's definitely some interesting things down there. I've never been to South America, especially down in the really low part of South America. I'd love to. It looks like a beautiful place down there. Um, question. I have a question about, not about off-grid, but about nocturnal emission. I feel like demons bully and torment me on my dreams. Nocturnal emissions, most of them are about my past addiction to porn. Yeah, there's ways to get around that. Um, you can play the King James Bible like Alexander Scorby recordings very low so it's not keeping you awake. I would recommend that. Um, make sure you don't have any kind of occult stuff around and um, pray about it. I struggle with that same thing. 
Um, <clears throat> question with the trucker strikes, is it best to move out of the cities and towns? I already live in the sticks, just curious. Uh, the trucker protest thing, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, there's definitely some issues there. Mostly it's going to cause supply chain problems of uh, stuff not available in the stores and things. It will ultimately, which probably ultimately will lead to rioting. Um, Question, do you think that someone wanting to move off grid should spend a couple months getting themselves off of pharma drugs in hospitals? Also, women should look into the lily cup. Um, yeah, I think that that would be a good idea. People should, you know, you kind of prepare yourself to go off grid. Um, question, do you have a house church? Usually children in isolated homes would socialize in church. How do you account for that problem? It's not a problem. I'm thinking about getting kids married in particular um my son it's so funny people oh you're, you're back in there you're isolated and everything else we have to tell my son not to talk to adults when we go out to stores he's very social with people and people strike up conversations with him and he'll carry on conversations with people he's not some weird little boy that walks around through the store or something that's that's a you know nonsense that you raise children back in the middle of nowhere and then they, they'd be very antisocial and weird and whatever. Not true. Um, not true at all. Um, question, at what age or have you already begun to teach Oliver knowledge and instruction how to use guns and weapons? And what age do you recommend? Well, that's going to depend on the child. There are some children that mature a little bit quicker. They can handle it. You know, if they if they have a gun and they're, you know, how do you point this thing that or whatever? You know, OK, they're not quite ready. Um, but my son, he's already uh, shooting archery. Um, he has his own bow and he does pretty good, actually, with it. And um, he's very much into that. He has his own BB gun. Um, haven't done a whole lot because the stock on the BB gun is a little bit too long and I could cut it down for him and whatever else. But he you know, cocking it, whatever else. It's He's not real good at that. And he's he's learning about the thing of, you know, sights and sighting down, getting your sight picture and lining your rear and front sight up. He's learning it is what he's doing. But, um, you know, he has a he's had a toy gun since he was old enough to remember. So, yeah, on that. But, you know, I keep him around, you know, he's around my guns and whatever else he knows how loud they are. So. I never had a problem with him playing with one of my actual guns because he doesn't like the really loud noise and things. So he'd be afraid to actually go and grab one of dad's guns and shoot it off or something. And he, he's been taught from the very beginning that you don't touch something that's dad or mom's unless you ask. It's the way I was raised. Question, what is the best way to build a foundation for a cabin? I want to try and build a cabin this summer, have plenty of room on the seven acre property I'm renting. Um, that depends on where you're at. If you're down south, you don't really need much of a foundation because you have, you know, the, the ground isn't going to be heaving with spring, with it freezing in the winter and then spring thaw or whatever. Um, you have to study, you know, where you're at there. Um, we actually did a foundation for a cabin that was all hand laid stone and um, the stone can move and shift with the seasons and the cabin can just kind of stay there. And if you put like angle bracing on the cabin, like knee braces for timber framing, it pretty much isn't going to move. But even without that, um, our cabin, you can go in and any time at all, put the level on the wall and it's perfect. And it has just dry stone laid foundation. Um, up here, there's a lot of people that do the thing of uh, piers, um, like a concrete poured piers. Um, a lot of the old timers, um, like there's a cabin I was talking to the one of the rangers back at Baxter State Park, which is the beginning of the Appalachian Trail. If you don't know that, it's not far from where we're at right now. This is actually the north entrance right here. You have to go past our office to get to the north entrance of Baxter State Park to begin the journey on the Appalachian Trail or end it, depending on which way you're traveling. But um, I was talking to one of the rangers and I was looking at the one house that they have there. 
and it's just concrete blocks just you know crisscrossed up like this and then the cabin was built and, and uh, she told me she said that that's how the logging companies used to build the a lot of the old cabins they would crisscross um you know concrete block or whatever else and uh and she said you know there's times that you come in in the spring and you go to open the door it's a little bit tight and you say okay it's tight this way we'll just go jack up the one side of the cabin and put some shims underneath there and oh the door opens perfectly <laughs> so it, if you have a small place it doesn't matter you know um i remember you know talking to the one older guy i was speaking about earlier and he said that he had a cabin and um same thing he said there are times he'd have to go in through the window to get the door open and whatever else and he said you never knew what which part of the cabin was you know caved in or, or you know not caved in but sunk down you know and things and he said finally he just said enough of this and had a concrete pad poured underneath and then he said it doesn't move anymore so um but dry laid stone would probably be the easiest and uh it works it works very well again if you're down south or something and you put wood right on the ground it's going to get termites it's going to really get messed up uh question do you have any videos on how to teach or discipline children no i don't um that's a whole other subject i haven't really gotten into that just read the bible it's pretty much spells it out um question would it be a sinful lifestyle to do professional boxing or any fighting sport where you intend to hurt people very badly um well for what point what's the point of that you know if you want to get in good shape or something go out off grid and you know split firewood you know i don't really see the point in in that just a kind of a prideful thing so i don't mean that the children are affected by but instead that they have fewer opportunities to meet a partner. For example, I don't know of anyone meeting a partner in a supermarket. Um, that's up to the Lord is the way I look at it. Um, you know, there are, um, I mean, my, my son, he's met girls his age and everything. And he's not exactly, you know, oh, hey, I'd like to date a girl here. I'm seven years old now or something. You know, there's farms we go to and things, and they have children his age, and they play and whatever else, talk to each other. It's not a big deal. All right, do we have any other questions? Any other thoughts? Did I miss anything? Are there other people that should not move off grid? Anybody have any experience with that? Question, what books are you going through at the moment? Um, I'm assuming you mean other than the Bible. Um, I'm actually reading a book called uh, The Hidden Rainbow. It's called It's a History of Electricity and uh, pretty interesting. Just haven't had a chance to really get um, you know, much time to read it because there's a lot of stuff going on right now in our lives. Uh, Where I live, China, duh. <laughs> yeah, with uh, uh, Trudeau Ping or whatever, um, you don't need a gun to hunt, just a hunting license, and bows don't need a firearm license, but same safety rules apply with the use of a bow as any other hunting tool. Yeah, you have to be really good with a bow, otherwise you can really hurt an animal. And it's, you know, my dad used to call it butcher sport because he saw too many people just, you know, whoop, whoop shoot an arrow into the deer and hope for the best or something. Well, that doesn't work. Okay, on that question right there, it's not really about the off-grid thing, but uh, I have a video sermon on uh, did Jesus talk to himself? Okay, it's one of the common Trinitarian attacks, but 
I'll just say that. You can go look that sermon up. Question, what is one of the major differences between entirely off-grid and being in, being on-grid, but away from civilization, like 30 minutes to an hour away from nearest gas station kind of thing? Well, um, for me, the biggest part of being off-grid is the ability to produce my own electricity and to not need the grid. Um, growing up, we would have power outages occasionally, but it wasn't real typical. And then the second house that my parents moved to, and I lived with them for a while before I got married, um, that place there, for some odd reason, it just, the power would go out and be out for a couple of days. And it was, uh, it got so old. And I finally just thought, I need to really study this off grid stuff, the cabin, you know, type of thing that you know, we would go and visit my uncle's cabin as a boy. And um, I just, so I wasn't this just dependent on things, you know, the power grid goes down, you can't flush the toilet, you don't run the sink, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. And I thought, I, I really don't like that. I like to be able to say, you know, power, go, if the power grid goes down here, right now in our office, I just say, okay, well, you know what, let's just head home. And we go home, and you go in, everything works. There's no, oh, no, you know, this, the, the power's off here, too, or something. It all works. Um, so you can have a, a place that's kind of, um, you know, out uh, in a small town someplace or whatever else, but you should still implement some of the off-grid types of, of things and thoughts so that you don't go, if power goes out, you're not dependent. Um, question. I'm disabled and I suffer from autism. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I could go off grid. Is there any hope for me in this matter? Or should I just forget about the idea entirely? Well, it's something you have to pray about. I don't know your exact situation. I can't say exactly what to do. Um, try to do some some things of, of getting away from dependence of, uh, you know, using an electric mixer or whatever else. Just try to implement some things slowly into your life. Maybe see if there's some people that that uh, would want you and whatever skills you might have that you could move to their place off grid. Those are things that you can think about. Um, question, what about people who need to move off grid by force, war and parent needs insulin? Um, well, uh, again, study the whole thing of healthy ways to get a, around the diabetes type of a thing i would that's what i would recommend for that um if you're forced to be off grid because of war well you know um if you have the skills and whatever else of, of learning how to live off the land well that's going to really help you if you're forced to, to go off grid with off-grid living can one live in a tent in the wilderness uh, you can survive in a tent in the wilderness, but uh, living uh, for a very long time be pretty rough. Okay, I'm missing some of the questions here. Question, why do you think that America doesn't have so many clustered settlements? If you go back in history, most villages would be clustered together, not, not isolated, similar to the early colonies. Yeah, people have always very much formed into little close-knit communities and whatever else because you can't do everything yourself. Um, I have skills as a, in woodworking, but I'm not, I'm not really talented with uh, you know, uh, blacksmithing, we'll say, um, or raising animals all that well. You get around other people like that, and I think as America really falls apart here within the next couple of years, um, I mean, you know, this the system that we have and and all the weird division that's been created by Hollywood and the movies and 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 the media. Excuse me, not the movies. Well, Hollywood movies, but you know, Hollywood and the media and all the stuff that these people have created to divide the American people. And after things fall apart, I really think that. 
it's going to be whoever's left. They're going to start coming together and forming those little tight knit communities once again. Um, Do you think we will suffer famine before the time of Jacob's, Jacob's trouble? I think we will. Yeah, I think we will this year, actually. Um, question, your solar. What do you have for storage batteries? Um, the one system that I have for solar, believe it or not, is actually one of our old school buses. Um, it had three batteries in it, three big commercial grade batteries. You know, it's a big bus, big diesel motor in it. And all I did is I took the three batteries out of a little compartment there by kind of under where you sit, brought them up into the actual cab of the school bus. I removed this, the chair and all the other stuff from inside of it. I built a little plywood box over top of the batteries. And, um, and then I put the uh, charge controller and an inverter on top of that. And, I, and then I have four 100 watt panels. They go down and they keep those three batteries charged and um, it works. We power a refrigerator with that. Now, is that long-term, long-lasting? No, but it was free. <laughs> it, it came with the school bus, you know. And then the other system that we have is a, a Yeti. Um, it's an older one. It's a 1250, and it has a battery in it. And then I also have a, um, like a, I forget what you what you call the thing, but it's it actually connects to a second battery. So we have two batteries inside. That's a smaller system i think it's a 200 watt system and um and then so we have a 200 watt and a 400 watt system one is off of school bus batteries the other is off of a you know yeti 1250 so um, i forget the exact name of um the exact battery brand and whatever else but they're more of the solar type battery both are 12 volt they're you know they're not six volt and all the different stuff there um, they just, they work. Um, question, have you heard of solar power gener generators? Would those be a good idea or alternative for power, Jackery, Bluity, et cetera? Yeah, that's basically what one of my systems is. The Yeti 1250 is another one. Um, they work pretty good from what I understand. Uh, I'm not familiar with some of the ones you mentioned there, but I think it's basically the same thing. Okay. Are you going to make a video on how to find medicinal and edible plants off grid? No, I'm going to talk about that. Um, finding food, foraging for food, growing food. I will be talking about that in one of the seminars coming up, um, but I can't, I mean, I could show some of what we have here in Maine, but it really wouldn't be applicable to somebody in the South or somebody out West or in another country or whatever else. Um, so it's, it'd be better for people to just study that stuff on their own. Um, I'm just trying to see. Question. In the event of World War III, would it be safer to go off grid in Latin America or somewhere very remote in the U.S.? Um, that really depends. I don't know. That's one way or another which way it'll go. I can't say at this point in time. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to America when this country breaks down. Um, oops. Okay. Latin America has 50 years to catch up on tech. Would be better there. Good point. Yeah. I've heard some bad stuff. I don't know what's going on right now with the, the whole pandemic thing and all the lockdown stuff and whatever else. I mean, you know, down there, any kind of a third world country or whatever. Oh, man, it's probably really bad down there. I, I don't know. So, um, 
Have you ever made pemmican and what are your thoughts on food storage for long-term survival? Uh, good question. Um, yes, I have made pemmican. Um, I didn't use fish oil. I used peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter, dried fruit, um, chopped, finely chopped up nuts, um, and beef jerky, and I forget what else I put in it. But yeah, it was very good. Um, Long-term food storage uh, for survival purposes. Um, any kind of processed foods that have preservatives in them, you want to stay away from those. Uh, spam, stuff like that, uh, not really good. You know, mystery meat, <laughs> MREs, not really that good for you. Um, Long-term food for storage and, and whatever else that will last for a long time would be dried beans, oatmeal, um, couscous, barley, uh, rice, you know, things like that. Pastas, um, spices, herbs, uh, salt, like the Kellogg Sea salt. Um, there's a lot of that stuff that you can do. Dried powders, like superfood powders, they'll last for a very long time. Um, there are certain things that really do have a good shelf life, and you can use those. And they're bases for what you can find. If you go out and you can hunt, you can fish, you can slaughter your own animals. Um, you go out, you can forage for wild edibles, and then add them to those those bases, uh, you know, like rice and all the other stuff. You cook that, and then you add the other things into it. Um, that's my advice. It's what we've done for a long time. Um, Uh, question, do you have any advice on getting over being shy? This has affected me in trying to witness and trying to find a wife. Just keep uh, praying about that. Hide God's word in your heart and um, you'll overcome your shyness. I was a very shy, very quiet boy growing up. And um, you'll get there. If you will. If you're looking for a wife and looking to witness to the Lord and things, you just pray about it. You know, become obsessed with your subject. Read the word of God. Really put it in your mind uh, quite a bit. And the Lord will bring you into situations and will give you the courage to speak. Question. What do you think about ship's biscuits? Look up Guyana Guyanese dish on YouTube named Cook Up. Um, don't really know much about that. Um, I know a good channel that I'd like to recommend in terms of um, like off-grid cooking type of stuff and whatever else would be um, James Townsend Townsend and Sons I think it's called on YouTube and or James Townsend and Son or J.A. Townsend and Son I forget but he does 18th century cooking and so it's all you know cooked over open fires it's you know really simple ingredients he's put out some really good information and gets into the thing I mean they build a cabin by hand they build a dugout canoe by hand um, it's all stuff you know it, off-grid living, if you want to do it right, it requires a lot of study, um, and you can learn a lot. Um, so, question: How often do you go out hunting? Um, well, you know, usually the hunting season is when I go out. I don't really, you know don't go out and just shoot anything I want whenever I want to or whatever else. I mean, there's, um, again, if you study the history of hunting, you know, there was a market hunting time here in America where people were just going out and slaughtering a lot of wildlife. So they came up with the game commission to kind of say, Hey, you know, uh, don't just go out and kill everything. It's not sustainable to do that very long term. So, um, you know, if there's a, if there's a varmint or something like that, you know, some animal that's getting into your whatever, messing stuff up, and that's something that you can eat. Well, okay. You know, certain game laws don't protect uh, certain animals. You can pretty much hunt them year round. Question Can you skin a rabbit? Um, yeah. Ken. Any other questions? Keep an eye out down here on my dog. I don't know what he's doing. 
Okay, just lay in there. Question, do you think uh, being able to make meals mostly from dried ingredients, chickpea, rice, barley, beans, etc., is a good base since they have a long shelf life? Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Absolutely, it's a good thing to do. Um, you can add stuff to it and whatever else. Question, after you're saved, how urgent should it be that you get baptized? Um, that really depends. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a good thing to do. It's not required. It's not going to affect you if you don't get baptized or something, but I think it's a good thing to do. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, just show this one here quick. What case do you make for First John 5 7 being included in the KJV? I don't know. I think I have a video on that actually. I have, you know, the books to prove it and everything else. There were early church father citations of the Johannine comma. Um, it should be in there. Uh, I, it, it's, it's, it's an off grid seminar. I'm not really going to talk about that whole thing there. Okay, there, Sister Chantre. Put the link right there so there you go um thank you for doing that sister question if you were to quit your current job in town how would you go full off grid well you, you don't just quit your job and go full off grid um you know uh, you have to learn to kind of build up the property and everything else um So I'm just looking for any kind of um, off-grid stuff here. There's, you know, spiritual questions coming in, which is fine if I'm doing a Bible study type of thing right now. But I'm trying to get this off-grid seminar type of thing going here. Um, have you tried a solar oven? No. We have one, but we haven't had a chance to try it yet. It's been something we've been trying to get done there, but... Uh, well, we're about at an hour here, so I'm going to call it quits um, for today. Tomorrow is going to be why I am not into primitive survival. Um, difference between some of the bushcraft survival stuff that you'll see on YouTube and off-grid living. There is a difference there. Um, so, um, okay, I'll answer this one yet. What do you think of e-bikes as alternative to a car, a more affor affordable alternative? Um, don't really know much about them, honestly. Uh, so, Townsend has some great recipes I've tried. Many also, Doug and Stacy off great on YouTube, have a lot of good information for people. Yeah, both good channels. They both put out a lot of good stuff. You know, eat the meat, spit out the bones kind of a thing. Um, you can learn a lot from people. Um, always be open to learning. So, um, but thank you to everybody out there uh, for watching. And um, please hit the like button if you're not subscribed. Subscribe because if not, then my channel gets buried and doesn't exist and whatever. So I'm not monetized, but I'm just, you know, I'm a little slow sometimes with technology type of things. And so I, I've never bothered to really tell people, please subscribe or whatever. And I've actually made videos saying, please unsubscribe to people. But um, then my channel just gets buried. So if you could please hit the like button and leave a comment and whatever else, that'd be great. So we will see you tomorrow um, for another part of the off-grid seminar. And then I think that will be, yeah, that'll be number 10. And then we'll have four more to go after that. So uh, that is going to be it.
and I'll see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time.